Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries. And today we've got a lovely example of a WW Greener. And it's in for checkering and the length of pull adjustment. So a walnut added butt plate, bit of checkering, cleaning up. Just to sharpen up the checkering, a little bit of a stock polish. So let's get into it. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, so I've got a burficated nut there, so we need to make something for that. And uh, Four end steel looks fairly simple. There's been a couple of repairs on this, I've noticed. So this will be a clean up and a little bit of rechecking. Put that to one side for now. Uh, what we need to focus on is getting the butt plate blank made up. Do the length of pull to the first trigger. Get that measurement completed. Shape, grind, Get it to shape. The trick is getting into this now. I'm gonna need to zoom for this. No. Might need one of those adjustable screwdrivers. Sometimes I don't have any ready ground screwdrivers, so I have to resort to the modular system. I don't like them because they tend to be a bit brittle and uh, quite often break. The most common one that's available is a wheeler system. I have left all that up at my workshop, so currently I'm using a different brand. Uh, plenty of these modular screwdriver systems available. It's not a problem. And if you look down in the description, you will see I've got some alternatives as well. It's got a peculiar situation. This is uh, less standard than most. It has a side safety, which is peculiar to the greeners. Full of dirt, as usual. Sorry, my hand's in the way, isn't it? Yeah, that's not great TV. Has to be done that way, I'm sorry. And these little old screws are super sharp on the edges. Always are, just are. Okay, so now I've got to get that burficated screw undone. And I don't think I've got one that size, which means I'm gonna have to make one. So, there's a selection of screwdrivers. <laughs> right, I'll just move that out of the way in a minute. For safety. All those little screws need to be put to one side. I'm probably banging my head. I've got a lot of these now. These are my legacy screwdrivers. So I don't like to muck about with these. So what I do is I resort to butchering some cheap electrical screwdrivers usually, because uh, these are my gunsmithing ones. I don't want to mess with these. I can take a Wheeler um, screwdriver that you just, a uh, bit that you put in and grind that. Done that many times. That's why I'll probably need to buy a new Wheeler set. Or I can do something like this, which is a spring by burficated screwdriver, just a common or garden screw. They're not very strong and they tend to bend under a bit of pressure. And then you can get the budget type of socket, a changeable one. This one has a, a little uh, receptacle for putting other bits in. Uh, these are all things that you can do if you wish. So 
I'm not going to use these. I mean, that would be perfect, but that's actually one I use for undoing the really fine screws that are frequently found here or here. As you can see, it's a good fit. So we're not ruining those. Sorry, I'm not that much of a butcher, promise you. <clears throat> These are legacy antiques, so I, you won't find them easily. The Grace set, gifted to me by a um, much-loved late customer of mine. Never forget him, because I always work with those tools. So, again, I truly mean legacy stuff. This is stuff I've been given by people who I really cared about. <clears throat> so... You're not having those to destroy either. Can't get hold of them. <laughs> oh, everywhere. All going everywhere. Okay, so there's the donut screwdriver. Relatively cheap, disposable tool. Okay, there's my Makita LTX cordless slitting, one mil slitting blade. I'm going to cut that down through the centre. I did have that measurement. It was, uh, what was it? Start again. There we go. I'm going to pop that slit down the centre. There'll just be enough overhang. I don't have any donor screwdriver bits big enough. None of them are going to be worthwhile doing. And they're very brittle, that type. These are a little bit more forgiving. So I'm just going to crack on with this and I'll be back. Okay, so... This has been done freehand and by eye. Now I'm going to see if it actually fits. It does. There's a little bit of dirt in that screw in there. Okay. It's uh, quite an uh, obtuse angle I've ground on that because I need to get a clean in here. Again, it's very dirty, as is not surprising of its age. And this is angled, this is an angled uh, grinding. It's been ground with the wood in the, its originality. So unfortunately, the, the slots will not be exactly where you want them. And you've got to be so careful not to slip. See, the one side of that slot is not as deep. And I'm really noticing it now. Don't slip, Paul, because it'll be my thumb that catches it. All the stock. And it'll be an epic fail. So can you see the angle of that cut? That, the way that it's, you've got to undo it, kind of rotating round. Anyway. Fortunately, you don't see very many of these. It's a nice greener, look, greener touch. It's fortunately they're a bit more standardised these days. There you go. All right, so there we go. So that took me two minutes of my time, as opposed to absolutely ages. So now we come on to abusive tools. These are sacrificial. That's why they get they look so bad because they get used. You occasionally put them on the lathe and turn them back up again and it's all good. I'm just gonna give that a light tap. Just to slightly loosen it. Right, there you go, not, not, I'm not walloping it. I'm not smacking the what's it out of it. It's just a light tap, just to move that. Maybe I'll just push it, there you go. And there you go, that's the safety assembly cleared. Thank goodness for that, because that always gives me the heebie-jeebies, because <laughs> you can scratch the job so easily. Now that, I are actually some marks, so you can see where somebody's done that in the past. Anyway, let's get into it. Standard screws to release it. It's the top lever screw, needs to be released. That's when I reach for my nice legacy screwdrivers. I've got one there somewhere that's on my mind. I do like these. 
and it is a bit of a blatant plug, 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 even. Um, if you see these on Amazon, they are quite expensive, but flipping heck are they good. Um, you'll see the ones I've got are not messed up. There's a good reason for that, because they're good. Um, so I have good tools, and these are square ground, and uh, uh, on occasion I've ground them extra to get a particularly fine cut. Traditionally, you take a piece of carbon steel that was annealed, you'd, you'd, make, you'd get a ferrule to put it on, a hand, screwdriver handle, and you push that in and make it and forge it. But this is not the brief on this, because the customer wants his gun back, there's a lot of work to do. I've got to earn a crust in between all of that as well. It is what it is. Just get on with it. There we go. Beautiful. Let me, oh, whoa, flipping camera. Never in the right place. Right. Try to stay focused, Paul. <laughs> right. That's super sharp, that edge there. It's all under tension until you can get it out. Which is why sometimes I reach for a pair of pliers just to gently pull it out because you don't want to touch that. It's nearly always sharp. Nearly always, pretty much always. So, go through the screwdrivers. That's very thin. You can mess these up. They're full of dirt. This is commonly the case in, in an old gun. Got to try and clean that out without scraping up metal work. This screwdriver is a bit mucky. But like I say, I'm very tight on time. This takes quite a while. I don't know how much I'm gonna get on the video. I'm gonna probably have to really quite right. So this is almost a fit. If I just slide it, angle it slightly, you get that very fine. Am I on the camera? I hope I am. There you go. So without straining it and scraping the metal, see how much flex there is. It's under tension constantly. A lot of them are like this. So, I had an accident with my favourite sacrificial screwdriver, which is a classic electrical. This is what happens frequently. They snap off because they're quite finely ground to get into the, the screws. Okay, so now let's check there's no other screw fittings. I can loosen this off, making sure there's no additional pins. Ah, sorry, because I'm focusing on the job in hand, I'm not paying attention to the rest of the work. Of course I can't get it out, the trigger group's there in the way. This is the thing with some of us, you know, the some of my videos are imperfect because I, I'm Thinking about the All right, that does need a tap, so you put a drop of brass down there. Oh, that bottom plate moved itself. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Well, I'm pleased to say somebody's put a bit of grease in this. There you go. Lovely. These are a pleasure to work with. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. It's a bit oily. Uh, I might have to give it a bit of a solvent clean. All right, I'm off camera again. Sorry, guys. Let's zoom out. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Okay. So, uh, need to undo this. Okay. These are the jobs I love to do, but they're always under time pressures. Usually because I've got too many jobs in front of it and behind it. 
I can't give it the time it deserves. Um, and the price reflects that as well. Mustn't talk about money. Oh dear, that's terrible. Um, oh, there's a little name on there. Somebody's put their little name on there. And a date. Interesting. Okay, so you see there's scars and scores on this. Some of that might be taken out with a bit of a cleanup. There will be a natural blending in of the, uh, the new with the old. Here's a piece, and I try to find a piece that will, that's not going to work, it needs to be that way, right, so, this is dirty easy, find, find the windest point, lock that off, and as I've done before I've already scored it down there, so I know where, where I don't want to cut, I also need to know how much I've got to play with, I've got plenty there. Obviously, it's going to be laid down like that. So I'll be cutting a flat on this, sanding it flat, perfection. Um, this is a straight great piece of walnut. We're not going to make anything too much of it because the figuring in this walnut's lovely. Couldn't find a piece of tiger eye, which I was hoping to. So this is how it is, I'm afraid. Um, right, so very quickly establish having got the, the gun stripped somewhat, very quickly establish the length of pull once again. You can use a tape measure, or if you have flash, I treated myself to these. These are gunsmithers, verniers, it's a bit more accurate, and I think the customer deserves it. So, so sans stock, it's fourteen. So I need I need a length of pull of fourteen and three quarters. So I will cut the billet to be fourteen uh, a three quarter nominal. So it will be. A bit over to start with and I'll sand it down. Um, I'm probably going to use a circular saw with that. I've got freehand Makita circular saws. I only use Makita because I've just used them for a long time. So if you're going to do a, pro a product review uh, on a tool, there's one. This was the second fastest and strongest cutting uh, saw. The DSS611. I bought that 20 years ago. I kid you not. And I'm still using it. The only thing that fails are the blades and the batteries. There's plenty of generic batteries. And you can see they get really used. These are quite good. They've got a battery condition. This one needs charging. So the lithium iron Makita kit and generic Chinese just wanted to try them out. These just don't have the guts that this has. These these are heavier because they've got metal gearing. This one uses the six millimeter selector there. I can put all kinds of fittings in that. I've got one here somewhere. I can't find it now. Yeah, so I can put a screwdriver head and I can swap the heads out to what I need. Um, on the farm I use them as well. That one's knackered. <laughs> uh, on the farm I use them fairly extensively as well. Oh that's curious. Okay, forget about that. So yeah, the LXT range, these have been really abused and I've built some workshops with this. A lot of workshops. Screws have gone in. Makita LXT lithium iron. 18 volt system. Again, this was also bought 20 years ago. It's still going strong. And I've burnt out a couple of the Chinese ones. Use them all the time. Right then. So I'm going to go and chop this up. I'll be back. Okay, so. I did this freehand. I put a flat on that so I can put it on my cutting board 
Nice, not bad grain there, is there, hidden away inside that. So now I've got a flat surface, I can set this, cut this angle. There's enough wood in there to make a nice job. Cut that to length. Put this on the sanding belt, flatten it out perfectly. That end doesn't matter, side doesn't matter, it's only a reference. So we can plant it straight on there. Just to reassure you, I have cut that off freehand, balancing on that datum point on my bench. And you can see a very thin line where I put a pen line to follow it. That's approximately an inch. You don't need a circular saw with a big table. You can do this with a handheld Makita. <laughs> That's what I use. Um, and you can see that the form is taking shape. Now this is an inch. I've got plenty of material. I only want three quarters of an inch. So, you know, I can pick the nicest part of the grain and uh, very quickly formulate, as you can see, there's plenty of wood in this uh, to sacrificially create a new butt plate. Okay, so here we go. I kid you not, cut freehand using the circular saw I showed you. The reason is it's got a flat base and a perfect right angle, so you can rely on the tool and you don't need you know a fancy workshop to do it you can do it literally on a stool if you wanted to if i now offer this up very briefly i need to i know i need to oh i'll just check that that hasn't got a i need a straight edge be right back right so that is flat that is flat with a slight, it needs linishing. Because while that is beautiful, I will be there forever. Can you see that gap? That is nice to see. <laughs> so that has a very slight curve. What they've done, I'm sure, is they've heated this to bend it into place. Now, I could do the same. It will just take longer. So the modern approach is to take that slight curve out. It's beautiful to see, but it's not practical. I will put the curve in my billet. And I know they're in opposing grains. I understand that, guys. Uh, this is how I have to make it. The modern guns, um, Fairbrothers and people like that, they have the most precision workshops and they still plant a, a ready-made wooden butt plate. So I'm following modern standards here. It's nothing new. So that will be flattened to be put to perfection just to make sure that fits better. It's regrettable, but time is money and we have got to satisfy the customer's pocket as well. Okay, so with that linished and roughed out, and that is flat too, we have to ignore these drill holes, unfortunately. And what I need to do is plant that on with some glue. Uh, the glue is there just to hold it in place. And then I have to decide whether I'm going to plant that on and just leave it with the glue or put some screws in it. I need to go into my vintage box to get some nice screws if we're gonna go for the screw route. Uh, and then the checkering will ensue after that. I'm gonna to have to do a very truncated checkering. I just can't afford the editing time at the moment. So I apologize for it's not in full detail, uh, I am still working. This is not a hobby for me. Um, I don't get money. I can't pay the insurance bill, the accountants and everybody else that I'm supporting. <laughs> right, let's crack on.
I'm using CA glue, which will make some of you shudder, but it's the only one that produces an almost invisible line, glue line. Oh, there's always a problem, isn't there? <laughs> you always get a bit of crud to deal with. Okay. Let's just see if we've got a, got a hole in there or not. Yeah, there we go. Right, it's flowing. <clears throat> now or never. Right, this is fairly high viscosity glue. Got to wet those surfaces up. And that one. I'm going to do it quite quickly because even though this has got accelerator with it, it still wants to skate over every part of the job. Hold that tightly. I'm pressing down hard. <laughs> Look what's happened. I've got some acetone for that in a minute. Anyway, there we go. Now I use the modern glues because they're available and I'm sure the old boys would do too. Yeah, that's good. So that's actually holding already. Now I'm not gonna tempt fate and immediately start working on it. I'm gonna put set that aside and let that cure properly. And uh, probably come back to it tomorrow now, in fairness. I need to find another one of my boxes. So I'm of the practice of storing in wooden boxes. These are some new ones I've made up with stitching glue techniques. And it just allows me to store the job while it's resting, curing, or something's occurring and everything goes that belongs to that job goes in there. Sort of cack handy because I'm holding the box, obviously. Right, okay. I'm unsure as to how much of the work I'm gonna be able to display. Uh, due to video constraints and the like, but I'll do my best as always. I won't be able to show all the grinding because you know I tend to get in the way. Right, so that one's ready to put, be put aside, and as often happens, I have to jump about from job to job. That's got to be allowed to cure. Then when I do the checkering, if I do any oil polishing that needs to be allowed to dry and it back and forth back and forth so I don't always have one job on the table I probably have four or five jobs in between this time you see this again <laughs>
Okay, some time has passed and uh, I've chosen to, in between jobs, in fact, uh, to start the roughing process. And as you can see, there's a taper needs to be made from top to bottom. So it tapers more towards the rear here. So this is presently too high. Hard to show you here as a progress report. There you go. I'll have to measure it with the verniers. So the height there versus the height there. It needs to flatten off a little bit across here. But as you can see, I managed to capture some footage. This is just the roughing um, to get it to size roughly. And then I start to shave that bit off there as well to take the difference out and then it makes the final length of pull correct. Uh, so that was just a quick progress report in between jobs because unfortunately these jobs can't be done in one hit very rarely um, we'll get a finish done on this as well beautifully and this has got to be taken to size so you can't tell the two and sand it out by hand there's only so much work you can do on the linisher but you can see that it's now a blank and it's an extension and while it doesn't look right now and not in the slightest um, it will come right so that'll be for now that's the progress report now so occasionally in the process i put a little bit of stain to it to see how it might look it's unavoidable it's against the grain this is as you can see it's part of the progress it's not finished here I've just done a few couple a few grinds you can see it's not finished it's still got grit marks in there it's not a finished job get a bit a little bit of sealer and very quickly put a bit of a coat on it. This is just as a grain reliever. I fill the grain and I can see where I need to sand in a finer grit or use wire wool. I'm slightly ahead of the process on this particular occasion. But you can see that it does start to shape up. Obviously that's not been checkered yet. Just a little progress report to see how it improves with a time. And at least it makes the gun functional. So this bit will be finished on the linisher to look like that. Like that there. And you can see it's it's up oh, crumbs. Cool point. The pore's still quite open at the moment, as you can see in the grain. It's still not I need to grain fill that and oil it. We've not oiled it yet. And avoidably, unavoidably, there is a little bit of a, that needs a tiny bit of fill there. Tiny bit. You won't notice it when it's been sealed and cleaned up. I'm showing you in its worst case. You can still see there's grinding marks there that need to be polished out, obviously. This hasn't had any wire wool on it yet. Okay, now to the checkering side. So this particular range of checkering tools is Dembart from Sinomish, Washington. <laughs> but uh, they're not around anymore, it doesn't seem. There seem to be very few suppliers. There are other ones, Ullman's, and I can't remember the other one. I'll put it in the description. Um, which, which use this system, which is um, a removable uh, hardened steel. Cutters and they, I, I prefer them in, in the reverse, so I drag them rather than push them. Um, you can, at a push, make something like this that will cut. You need to put uh, some, some cuts on the side with... That took about five minutes to do, but then you've got to spend hours with a diamond file putting in the uh, grooves necessary, so... For the speed of the uh, job, I'm going to use this method. Plus, I've got them. 
Uh, you can get single ones. The old apprentices would always make them themselves. It takes hours to make them properly, harden them, make a beautiful job. But for the home market, this sort of thing is quite quite good. So this little tool here is actually going to tell you how many lines per inch your checkering has or needs. So when we take a look at this, we see this, somebody's had a go already. So that's going to make it a harder job because I've tried to clean it up and it's not great. I don't know if I can show that on the camera. It doesn't look great. Not going to lie. Um, so obviously that needs a checker pattern to match. Uh, we will see. We will see what we can do. So I've decided to take my measurements. You can do this with a, a vernier. I mean, it doesn't. You don't need a tool like this. If you dial up an inch on here, right, there you go. Fix that. There's your inch. Right, so I will then quickly look at this. Right, okay. So I've got to hold that there and then count between the lines. It's not that difficult, you wouldn't think, would you? 18. So that's the size we need. All of those are no good. Okay, so don't need these. So uh, two times 18, triples. Um, so I can check 18 lines per inch. If I now check that using this and it, co it collaborates, it, co it agrees with me. It, it's difficult to do that because it's insufficiently wide, but it is 18 lines per inch, but that is the inch and you measure it that was definitely gonna work, isn't it? I've got to set this one, set this out, and I have got a favourite pattern that I prefer. I'm not entirely sure what the original greener pattern would have been. This just doesn't look right to me. It could be, but I'm going to use one that I favour for most of these jobs. And again, you can use this to set out your marks. That's one of the things it's good for. Three times longer than their width. You can. Look at these old marks. It's been moved around rather a lot, uh, so it's going to be tricky to get a good. Yeah, so this is using a three times length. We're talking about the diamond. So you use a three to mark this out using a pencil. Um, then you make the inevitable commitment and put the borderline cuts on. And... Uh, so on. Right, it's probably going to be quite difficult to set up for a camera to see. Anyway, this is how it is now in the white. Uh, blended up pretty much good enough. Uh, they're about the same place. I don't know where my razor blade's gone because I would normally put a razor blade cut in there just to break the fibres and then I can start putting the, group, the V cut in. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put a cut down here, a cut down here is my first starting ones. I'll cut a borderline probably and then I'll start setting up for the cuts. Again, it's going to be on my knees because I want to clamp this between my knees. It doesn't, it's not, I won't work like this, it's awkward. Right, my eyes are going, so I'm going to have to stop, otherwise I'm going to screw it up. But it's roughed out now, um, I'm going to have to go over it again. Tidy it up a little bit, straighten out the lines. But uh, this is where I need to put a little bit of stain on this. To uh, reflect the age. It's got a match to, it's actually got to look like it's been there ages, isn't it, essentially. So, just get some stain in there. And that starts to look a bit better already. 
got to clean up the border. Not quite right yet, not by a long way. It's certainly on its way. I can't see a damn thing there, can you? It's on its way. I just need to straighten out these borders. Get this a uh, little bit more like it. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in there because it's very, very dry. Use a bit of Alkanet. Right, I'm going to use a toothbrush for this, I think. Right, just got to put a little bit of it oil into this because this wood is super dry right now so before I do any more I'm going to oil it up oh, not on this camera not on the camera oh well and see where I've gone wrong because <laughs> sometimes your eyes go and uh, you just can't see what you're doing so I've got some corrections to do no doubt in here just to correct that checkering it doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect though, and that is it's accepting no to know what you when to stop. If I'm honest, that's probably a fair estimation. Get some oil in that just to lubricate it up a bit. Lubricate it—that's the wrong word. Nourish it. That's what I'm all about. Now I've got too much, way too much oil on my hands. Okay, so moving on from the checkering at the back, which I need to finish off, but I need a break from it. So I've just blasted through this. Now this is this is an imperfect finish, and I'll show you why. I'm trying to get you a close-up view here. Uh, you look in here and you see there's various bits that don't seem to have, they seem to wander off. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. So if I was to follow through with a single cutter, I would wander off there. Be very careful. There's a couple here. I can't see. Yeah, I think you can just about see it. They fan out a bit. So they finish by hand these corners and fan them out. So if you go in with any of these parallel cutters, it'll jump all over the place. Completely lost the checker in there, obviously, which is why we're doing it. And a lot of the lines are missing. So when you come across here, sometimes you've got to go in with a single just to set the lines. And then very carefully with the right hand cut, uh, but you also notice they waggle around the profiles a lot. So you've got to be very careful. There's a couple of er small errors in this checkering. But the idea is to give an overall view. It's an imperfect checkering. Because it's it's had some other work previously. You know, everybody always says that. But it, it you can only do so much. Because you're cutting away wood all the time. So you've got to play with your eye and just go with it. And sometimes there's imperfections in the grain that cause these bumps. So sometimes you get the less than perfect job. If you're paying a lot, obviously you will get a perfect job because they'll they'll sand it all down and start again. Um, but I was just trying to pick out what was here already and just improve on it. But sometimes when there's been such a disparity of lines like these, You've got to be very careful that they go wide and narrow here. I can't be sure. Yeah, yeah, I can say that. Yeah, they get narrow and wide. Like somebody's followed through with something and it's, you're trying to tidy up a job that's probably not ever going to be as perfect as it should be. Uh, um, a lot of the gunsmith shops will say, oh, restocking, you can do it all properly then. They would say, don't do this. They'd say restock it, but that's thousands, not a couple of hundred in terms of hours and hours of work. So, yeah, I'm not going to show it all because it just gets too tedious. I'm trying to watch the work and where the camera is and my hands drift off over the place. So it looks terrible at the moment. It will become better. It will come better in the end. And there's a few blemishes, imperfections here as well. 
they need picking out. But I, um, I'm just going to leave that. Come back to that when you're fresh and start start that again. The same with this. I'm not going to keep picking away at it. I'm just going to do the volume for now and then go back to that with a single cutter and tidy it up. There, there you go. Okay, guys, a bit of an update. Uh, so we have something like this, rather worn out and flat, hardly any checkering, and it goes to that. That's a kind of an example of work in progress. Obviously, it's not finished. You can see where I'm working it. So obviously that comes right up to there and there's a border and it's tight on the border. Try not to make an old gun look weirdly new, but there's still a bit more work on this yet. And um, also you've got the checkering there, the checkering at the rear. There's a bit of touch up needed doing. Look at that grain in there. You can see the grain there. And that's just had some of the linseed on it. So it's taking a minute to dry. In this cold weather it doesn't dry very quickly so i've got to just leave that and then i'll be tough i'll be knocking that back a little bit with a fiber wire wool and then a bit oiling again so we're nearly there with that one um sorry i can't show you constant footage but i tend to do this sort of checkering sitting on my lap because I, I can get over the work and see what i'm doing so you know you can see there's a bit bit more work need doing there and then it blends in there but it's, you know, you get the idea. So carry on watching. It'll be a second for you, but I've got a load more work to do. <laughs> See you in a minute. Okay, some time has passed and I've got the checkering done. And put a bit more of a burnish on this. This is now a, a light satin and looks pretty nice. Um, I like to get the guns back in the actions, so all, this, all that's been worked on as well. It's developing nicely. I will do some more, but I like to get the gun back in its action. Uh, this is the most vulnerable point of time. So, home straight. straight just got to get it all back together again lovely jubbly customer will be pleased because he's anxious to try it and see it uh, it's a family gun uh, barrels have been sleeved in the past so these greeners are worth looking after they're out this is an heirloom gun isn't it so it's obviously going to be cherished so i'm so pleased with the way the grains come up it's improving no end this was quite dark when I first put it in. I used some solvent to clean that out and uh, just need to reassemble now. So let's get on with it.
it is just rusty. Oh, sorry. Focus. There you go. It does fit. It's just a bit rusty. Uh, dirty. So put that, push that through. Get it to be clean again. Nice. Just make sure that there's no solvent left in that. We don't want solvent going into the stock. Causing all kinds of mess. They won't lubricate it because it'll be pressing right up against the uh, stock. Pick your screws. I don't think there's any left or right handed one. We'll just try them. And a little mark just appeared. I'll have to clean that out. Not even sure if I'm on the camera, so I apologise if I'm not. That's a better clean job now. That's nice. Sorry about the hands, guys. Okay. Now your little escutcheon goes on top. This gets fun to put in because it seems to be on a half cop situation. <laughs> Sorry about the fingers, it obstructs the view. I appreciate that, but there you go. Okay, pretty, very nice. Again, little screws. The greeners are beautiful, really are a nice gun to work on. In fairness, I quoted the guy £100 less than I would normally charge because he was unsure as to whether to spend the money. So I did him a deal and the reason was, so you guys would see it. And why not? There we go. And then a little perforated friend to go in back in there very carefully. I'm gonna hold my breath now. Oh, I do hate them when they're this close. I'm just going to do this on my knees, on my lap, so that I can control it better. I kind of appreciate why there are a few marks on there from previous. It does fit nicely though, so fair play. You have to really appreciate these old boys, uh, the old gunsmiths of old. They put more effort in than they do these days, even though they're really nice today too, weirdly. What a paradox, eh? Well, so I'm going to do a little bit more burnishing and whatnot. Just make sure that it's nice and stable and doesn't bloom. It won't do. It doesn't seem to now. I've left the marks in there. They look part and parcel of what the gun should be like. Remember, there's something funny about the way the, uh, the lump goes on. It's got this little leader here that then allows it to lock. But it is a sod to put on. Um, this is a trick to it. And I haven't got the trick, obviously. <laughs> there it is, lovely. Okay, nice. Now this has been sleeved, so a lot of people go, oh, the value's downgraded. And there you go. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Got way too much clobber on this bench. Anyway. Uh, 
a very nice greener. Job done. That's all guys. I'm going to continue giving it a tidy up on the stock. Now it's all back together. I can stand it up. I can do a little bit, leave it. Till next time, guys.